feeling well and doing well these days. It's um, I'm grateful for you and for your ministry. Um, was good to see some of our um, Moorhead area pastors at the uh, gathering for the cleanup after the vandalism at the mosque the other day. Um, and uh, to actually see people like that in person, um, more than just a few at a time was pretty amazing too. So um, we have a pretty full agenda today. I'm going to uh, just go over quickly. Um, we'll have a, a devotion and some time for sharing. Uh, we do have a poll. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some just uh, conflict management and um, <clears throat> some of the things that we're seeing around reopening um, and hear from you about that around uh, or returning to in-person worship. Um, and then uh, some, we'll talk a bit about Synod Assembly and then there was one other, uh, an open doors and some grant, a grant opportunity. And then what was the other item, Chris, that we needed to add? Uh, the conference get togethers. Oh yes. Well, let's begin. I, I will share for my text, um, the, or for the text, which is the text for this Sunday in the Revised Common Lectionary. Um, and uh, if anybody has any great ideas for preaching, let me know because I don't yet. But I do have some questions for us to think about. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. So this last weekend was a work weekend for me. Um, and uh, it was also meant that in addition to putting docks in, it wasn't a time for burning of branches, lots of branches and uh, stumps and dead trees that had to be burned. And it was, it was helpful for me to come to this text after that re after that experience because the thing that I know is that this these words of Jesus they're, they're not a threat um, when he says whoever does not abide in me and the branches are gathered and burned it's just a statement of reality that um, the, the the branches that are that, that don't that die or that don't bear fruit or they're not connected to the main branch are uh, or to the vine, in this case, are gathered and burned. Um, they wither and die if they're not connected to the to the vine or the, the main branch. It's just a reality. It's not, and, and honestly, um, in this in this story, we or in this parable or this illusion that um, illusion that Jesus makes uh, this metaphor simile um we understand understand that the branches don't live off their own fruit they don't sustain their own life our life is sustained only in christ so i guess um a question that i have for us to think about is what has been nourishing your faith in christ or what has helped you to abide or maybe another way is, when have you felt the greatest sense of abiding with Jesus in the last little while? 
um, I shared uh, with the presidents last night because the experience was fresh that I, I really sensed it that day um, among uh, both Christians and Muslims and I'm sure people who wouldn't identify formally with any faith. I've uh, at the mosque where, where people gathered purely out of love and concern for their neighbor and for their community. Um, I sensed uh, the abiding of Christ, of Jesus in that time together. Um, and it was good to meet neighbors who I wouldn't otherwise meet in that context and really felt a sense of abiding and really a sense of safety there. Uh, that this, this is a place of safety because these people are here purely out of love and care for their neighbors. So that was a time for me. Um, but uh, I, the second question that I would like to you to think about as you, we go into small groups is, what has fruitfulness looked like? It's easy to, it's always easy. If you're like me and you, you kind of, you're, you're better at fault finding than you are at um, being a talent scout, it's something I always have to work at, but I, it's easy for me to, to see a lack of fruitfulness often. And so I, I have to work at, and I do, at seeing fruitfulness. And um, so I invite you to do the same. What is fruitfulness? What has it looked like? And then what has been nourishing for you? Or when have you sensed a greatest sense of abiding? And we'll go into small groups and come back in about 10 minutes. Would anyone like to share, <clears throat> excuse me, would anyone like to share something that you heard that stood out for you and your uh, time together? An open mic with 38 <laughs> preachers. Uh, I heard that um, pruning a tree uh, can not only produce more fruit, but it changes the fruit itself, changes the taste of the fruit. The apples got better after the tree had been pruned. Wow. What else? Anybody else have something to share from what they heard? That Anybody have any great ideas for your sermon this Sunday? that I can shamelessly steal. Wow. <clears throat> We're going to be praying for the movement of the Holy Spirit between now and Sunday for the preachers. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's do a quick poll here. Um, we're doing a poll that's uh, responsive to just because we were curious about where things are at it now with with uh, in-person versus hybrid versus virtual uh, worship, and also um, around uh, how just how it's going in terms of harmony or dis disharmony uh, in the life of our congregations right now. So, oh, it says I'm logged in from another device too. Maybe Carla, Carla, can you click on the poll and get in? Is Carla with us? I think she is. Yep. It's up now. It's up. Oh, okay. Good. Yay. Someone will have to display the results when the polling is done because I don't have access to that. So far, 60% have voted. 
you know, with every multiple choice test, it's always best to go with your first answer. Eighty percent. We have about 86% that have voted. Are we about done? I have probably because Bishop Bill and I can't, and I'm not sure about people on the phone. And I can't either, so. Yeah, I think you can post the results. Okay. So Chris, do I just end the poll? Yep, end poll and then post results. Uh, share results, okay. Yep. Can people see the results? Give me a thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> I can't, but that's okay. okay so what are they? So Bill, Bill, <laughs> the totals are, um, how are you worshiping? Um, totally online, we have 3%. Um, hybrid, uh, parking lot, outdoor and virtual, 10%. Hybrid, indoor and virtual is 81%. That's our high vote there. Um, and totally in person is 6%. Do you want to comment on that before I go to the results of number two? No, other than to say it's, it's it kind of jives with uh, what we heard from the presidents last night and what we've been able to observe um, just from where we're sitting. So on question number two, how are you personally doing? Uh, about a quarter of our participants are doing pretty good. 65% are kind of yellow, overall okay, little extra stress, and then 10% are in the red zone. Yeah, and that does too. Um, I'll, I'll say more about that in a bit. How is the overall leadership of the congregation? 42% um, report green, doing pretty good. 58% say yellow and 0% red. Okay. And the last question, how is the reopening process going? 26% report that it's going great. 45% uh, report that it's going good. 23% say fair and 6% say bad. Yeah. So even though 6% on this particular call is probably one or two, maybe three people, um, it, that's a significant percentage um, of those who are, uh, and then there was, I can't remember what the percentage was in yellow, but, um, but it's a significant number. And uh, the thing that we're, and we're seeing that too, just in our work. So, um, as we get close to the end here, or, or closer to the end than we are to the beginning anyway, I think we can say, definitely say that of the pandemic and restriction people, some people get their vaccines and it's just getting, uh, people are getting impatient, even in places where folks have been managing pretty well um, for quite a while. And it's like all of a sudden, just a year of anxiety, and uh, pent up anxiety has started to come out in some places sideways and in all different ways. And so uh, we are seeing an uptick in uh, our need to respond to congregations in some form of conflict. So I wanna invite your wisdom too. I'll share a couple of things that I know about managing conflict and uh, you can share what you know as well. Um, our, you know, our, just in terms of the issues itself, our guidance is the same now as it was a few weeks ago or a month or so ago when we sent out the last guidance, which is there are safe ways to gather, but, you, but each congregation and each community needs to make its own decisions based upon local circumstances. And those local circumstances would include um, how are case numbers in your county and vaccination rates in your congregation and what about the uh, health and well-being of your rostered minister and their family? Um, not everyone is able to make the same choices because of 
uh, the realities of underlying health conditions for either them or their family members. And so um, today, the CDC came out with new guidelines, uh, relaxing restrictions in outdoors, which we kind of knew were coming. And that's, that's good. Um, but that, that remains our guidance. And for the most part, it sounds like many of you are navigating that fairly well. But there are a significant number of congregations that had been navigating well and now are, are kind of um, at each other's throats. So some things that I know, uh, first of all, of course, the only person you can control in the room is yourself. And so um, leadership is first and foremost about self-management, right? And it is about attending to how am I doing right now and what buttons of mine are getting pushed um, taking those deep breaths in order to activate, to settle down your autonomic nervous system and get your brain functioning at some higher levels so you can be imaginative and creative. Um, and uh, not that that will be the whole answer or solution because people will continue to react out of their own anxiety. But if you can at least get to a place where you're not living out of yours, uh, you're in a better place to stand than as you navigate that. In some places, we've noticed that what's going on is that folks just really haven't talked to each other because they've been on Zoom. Um, meetings have been very businesslike and have been expedited um, because nobody likes to spend more time on Zoom than they absolutely have to, right? And so what that's meant is that the missing piece has been just some of the stuff that you would share with one another when you're in person that um, about how you're doing and how you're feeling about things and how you're feeling about the decisions that are being made that you're making together. And so to really just invite conversation and, and really encourage people into a posture of curiosity and listening for understanding. I think in places where we've engaged recently, um, had that happened earlier, they might not have found themselves in the tough spot where they were. Um, and so those are two ideas uh, for navigating conflict. Uh, attend to yourself and listen, encourage active listening for understanding. What about you? What have you found helpful in navigating rough waters? The small catechism. <laughs> <laughs> Explain your neighbor's <laughs> actions in the kindest way. Right? Yep. Uh, we, we remind ourselves that before our meeting. Lost you a little bit at the end there, Celine, but maybe you can put it in the chat. Oh, I was saying we remind our. Well, um, while Pastor Salim is writing, maybe uh, some other thoughts. Don't be shy. That's great. I, I, I know that there's been a lot of people that have been hedging off from getting the vaccination. So I kiddingly said to some of them, um, well, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll just walk around in my shorts and see what happens when you don't get polio vaccinations. And, and there wasn't too much laughter, but I meant it to be funny, but it, yeah. they did think about it. And just that there is a seriousness to it. And, um, and then uh, they ask, they keep asking me, well, Pastor Kathy, what do you say? And, and I remember your comment, Bishop, that you said, if you, if you don't want to be put on the spot, just throw the synod under the bus. I think you yeah. said that. And so I just said, no, um, you have to look to the synod for that. And um, we'll get along. We'll, we're doing just fine. So I don't know. I, I, I do take the vaccination seriously. And, um, and I do tell them that they're protecting themselves and me. <laughs> I'm kind of selfish in this, that, that they need to take care of the pastors. So that's all. 
Thanks for that, Kathy. You know, we have been um, tooting our own horn here in Minnesota about how great we're doing with vaccinations, but here's the truth. So this is a map of Minnesota and the dark shaded areas are areas that are doing great. The light shaded areas are at about 16% vaccinations. So that's Northwest and Southwest Minnesota. Everywhere else, the reason why our numbers are so good in Minnesota is because of everywhere else except Northwest and Southwest Minnesota. And so we have to do better. And I, I'm going to start some messaging around that. And I, and, um, I encourage you to do as much as you can. And you can share what I send out too. But I think the churches need to now play a role in helping people understand basic ideas about vocation. Um, and the vocation of scientists and doctors and researchers and how God is using these th matters to bring a blessing to us. So that's an aside, but it's an important issue. How else have you found it helpful to navigate conflict during this time? This uh, resource, Jill, was in the uh, Star Trib. It's uh, COVID vaccine growth lagging in some Minnesota areas. If you if you uh, put that in Google in the search Google search bar, I'm sure you'll find it. Okay. Um, well, one thing I will say is if you are in, a, in, the, in the impossible situation where you do not believe it is safe for your family or for you because of underlying health conditions or wh whatever your unique circumstances are, and your congregation is insisting that they have to return to in-person and have you present uh, in worship uh, providing leadership, that's a situation where you really need to call us, okay? So... Don't hesitate to reach out if that's your situation. Um, open doors grants. ELCA, why don't you put that on the screen and I'll just talk over it, uh, Chris. The ELCA are, um, are coming out with a new series of grants. These are direct grants, not, not block grants to synods, but direct to the ELCA called open doors grants. These are up to $10,000. So um, oh, uh, 1,500 to 2,500. I initially heard up to 10,000. Um, I guessing if you have a great idea, you could maybe apply for more, but 1,500 to $2,500 is the suggested range right now. Um, for any ideas you have around ministry, uh, the, with, uh, that is informed by things you've learned during the pandemic or issues you're responding to in your community, um, or ways that you want to do ministry going forward in a new way. Um, I'd encourage you in, your, in, in cohorts like tech studies and conference meetings to do some brainstorming together um, and, uh, and see, you know, there will be some ideas that appeal to some congregations more than others, and you can take each other's ideas and run with them. So here's some different idea sharing you know, here's some idea sharing that, um, and you can post your own ideas here as well. But some of the ideas that are here are things that I know you're already doing. And so um, I would encourage you to apply. And if you have questions about how to navigate Grantmaker, uh, I'd like you to try it first before you call me. But you can talk to me or you can talk to Keith, Pastor Keith Say. Both of us have had plenty of experience with Grantmaker and can um, help you navigate that. That's the ELCA's online program that you would use to apply. It's pretty straightforward, but it's understandable if you get caught somewhere along the way. Questions about the grant? Bishop Bill? Yes. Uh, you said that some of us are already doing these things, but it sounds like it has to be new, something you've never done before. No, not necessarily. I would say it be, could be something that, um, that you are, I think you can, 
you can characterize it as a ministry that has been a part of your response to to you know COVID-19 to the realities that things you've learned about in the community um, but even if it's something you're already doing and you think it's creative uh, maybe you're gonna may, maybe the grant will enable you will enable you to do something that you had dreamed of doing but you didn't want to spend the money um, you know maybe I mean just because I'm not feeling very creative today but if it is that outdoor movie, maybe it's, yeah, we would like to serve popcorn too. I don't know, but uh, you can buy a lot of popcorn for $2,500. Um, but you know, I'm, you, you get what I'm, where I'm going with that. Does that make sense, Paul? Yeah, yes, it does. Just we're thinking about how do we get some of our families who have gotten out of the habit back and sort of a big event yeah, to give them excuse to come back into the church and they go, oh, okay, we're coming back. You know, that's what we're looking at. And maybe recreate something we did a few years ago that was, people would be excited about. Yeah, and that's what these grants are targeted towards. And also, um, most of you have engaged some or, or many new people, somewhere between a few and many um, new people through your online uh, worship. And so ideas about ways that you might engage that audience or that group of people. What I can tell you about ELCA grant making is especially there will be other rounds of this in the future. But if you are an applicant for this first round, you'll get a grant. So I would just encourage you to go ahead and give it a try. All right. So some of you saw um, in the news that our uh, mosque here in Moorhead was um, vandalized and uh, with uh, hate speech and uh, broken window. Um, the communities gathered around. It's I mean I think God will do something good with that, as God always does, um, and uh, some good things are emerging. Uh, but I just think. Um, if you have opportunities to build relationships across difference in your communities, um, wherever that's possible, and I know it's not possible everywhere, um, I encourage you to, to, to do that. Uh, because, you know, I, I've had opportunity now to meet the Imam and that's the good that comes out of events like this is that connections and relationships get made that will, I'm confident will now grow and endure. Um, the uh, those messages of hate as prevalent as they are, they don't represent the majority. They don't represent, they certainly don't represent the spirit of Christ and they don't represent the majority among us either. So I uh, wanna talk a little bit about uh, conference get togethers. We are going to be um, uh, having opportunity to for me to be present at each one of the conferences between now and uh, I think one of them is in June, a couple of them perhaps. Um, do you have a happen to have a schedule there, Chris, or no? That's okay. I, <laughs> Never I can mind. find it. You I saw your face. I'll look for it. Um, uh, I could go through my calendar and give you the schedule, but um, your conference deans will send you messages about that. But I, uh, over the next two months in May and June, um, I want to come and be present and uh, offer a, a, a word and worship, um, have opportunity to share a meal um, in some way that's safe and socially distanced as necessary. Um, and then also it's a great way for us to welcome our new, and I put quotation marks around it because we pretty much have to go back two years uh, for some people, uh, almost two years for the last time that um, for folks who have entered our synod since uh, we last were together in person. So um, it'll be an opportunity to welcome some of our newer rostered ministers. So I think the next one, I know the closest one to, is next Tuesday, I'm meeting with Conference 2 at Zion and Thief River Falls. So looking forward to that. Yeah. May 6th, it's conference eight. May 
11th in conference four. May 13th, it's conference seven. May 18th, it's conference six. And conference one is June 3rd. Conference three and five are TBD. So look for information from your conference deans. So read your emails. And I think the Midgey conference is the 10th, Monday the 10th. If I'm not mistaken. And yeah. if there's beans on the call, yes. Okay, good. Yep, Monday, May 10th. And are we going to be at the park? We're going to be up in New Salem. Turtle oh, River. good. That's right. Turtle River. Yep. So indoor, right. outdoor. Yep. Looking forward to that. Let's talk about Synod Assembly real quick. Chris? Yeah. Um, Synod Assembly is on its way. A couple of important things to help the process. Um, registration is open. Registration prices go up at 11.59 uh, next Monday, May 3rd. Um, so if you want to save um, the congregation, I think it's $15, um, register before then. Um, you, uh, um, every voting member needs their own email address that they can access during the assembly because that's how voting is going to happen. Um, we will be using Zoom and you guys made it here, so you should be able to make it to that. Um, we will be having a meeting on Sunday night, May 16th and during the day on May 17th to talk about some of the business, the resolutions, compensation guidelines, um, because we haven't ever done a Synod Assembly in a day before, let alone a sort of short day. Um, and so we have a lot of business. And so it's important to um, try to attend those meetings um, to learn about what we're voting on. I'm hopeful to get a lot of the reports and resolutions on the website by next week. Um, there is um, Friday the 21st from 5.30 to 6.30, there will be a session that we're strongly, strongly encouraging everyone to be on. Um, it will be, we're going to practice voting. Um, and I don't, many of you probably have not used Qualtrics, which is the, platform that we're using for voting. And so even if you are a technology native, it would be good for you to be part of that on Friday night. So then our business can run smoothly on Saturday. Um, we have six resolutions that we'll be voting on, some great stuff. Um, we have growth groups, aka workshops that will be available online for you and your congregations to use throughout the year. Um, worship, we'll start with worship, um, and Bishop Bill will be preaching, and the service will work for your congregation for Pentecost, so if you, um, with Bishop Bill preaching, so if you want to not write a sermon for Pentecost, you don't need to. Um, Bishop Bill, is there other things that you'd like to talk about for Synod Assembly? And just a note on the resolutions, so we have six, and some of them um, could potentially generate significant discussion. We are going to limit discussion to 12 minutes. Um, and if we had 12 minutes of discussion on every resolution, we would be, it would, it would blow our schedule. So not saying you shouldn't speak to or even make motions, but I am appealing to you um, that unless it's some, please don't do so unless it's something about which you're very passionate um, and, uh, and you feel like it's, it's absolutely essential and uh, you'll still be a beloved child of God, even if you do that. But um, the, uh, we have a resolution, uh, a, a pretty mundane one to adopt some items in the constitution that are not required, that were changes that were made at this last churchwide assembly in 19. Um, there's a resolution adding two additional seats to the Synod Council that and, and stipulating that 
these these two seats would be representative of, of minority populations within the synod and um so that adds two more so that means that uh, we would then have four uh at least four voices hopefully more but at least four who are voices that um here in a mostly white church we don't often enough hear and pro experiences and perspectives and wisdom that's needed for us to be as healthy a church as we can be and as faithful as we can be. There's of course a resolution to adopt the, um, the new compensation guidelines. There's a resolution on boundary training specifying uh, that it be every three years, which brings it in a line with the practice throughout the ELCA. And another resolution requiring training on becoming an anti-racist, which would also make that a three-year, um, every three-year responsibility of rostered ministers and strongly recommended for other leaders in the Synod. Um, and then there's a, a resolution affirming the strategic direction. There's been a lot of work done on the wording and every time we look at the strategic plan, we feel like it could be reworded again um, right now, it really is pretty basic and simple, um, but it, it does provide the strategic direction. So we've tried to craft a resolution that doesn't get us bogged down in the details of the specific of every word in, in the resolute in the plan itself. It more refers to the plan, but then just affirms the four strategic directions. Uh, the first being, uh, focusing, um, our collaborations and our resources and leadership on congregational vitality, specifically with small membership congregations. The second being recruiting diverse and adaptive leaders. The third being um, living more fully into our baptismal promise to work for justice and peace in all the earth. And uh, the last one being uh, the last line of effort, the fourth, being um, convening leaders to respond to ongoing and emerging change. So really that's the part we're asking the assembly to affirm. And then building in another resolution which gives the Senate council and me and my staff along in collaboration with the council, the ability to adapt the direction as needed. But we felt it was important for there to be a way for the whole Senate in assembly to affirm the, the general direction. So um we'll see how that works but seven resolutions uh i would say a good number of them quite substantive and so um it will be great to attend some uh, orientation sessions on sunday and monday of the week of that week uh so that folks are um so they don't have to take time of, on the floor asking questions about resolutions um, but again, we will limit debate for the main motion and any subsequent motions to a total of 12 minutes, three minutes or three speakers for and three speakers against, at which point we'll either, depending on the action, refer the resolution or uh, vote, proceed to vote on the, the motions that are on the floor. Questions, thoughts about that? Check your emails from me um, for when uh, the resolutions and a majority of the Synod Assembly documents will be on the website. Um, I'm working on a handbook. Um, it's at like 15 pages right now that I'm going to send one to every congregation that has um, tech help. There's a glossary of ELCA terms. There's um, our Synod Council, the staff, um, just sort of a, a Synod Assembly 101 sort of book. Um, we're trying to be as hospitable as possible to our voting members. And we know that sometimes um, this is the first time anyone's read a resolution. Um, and so how to read those and all of that. Um, the pre-assembly gatherings, will there's Sunday evening and then 
Monday afternoon. I don't remember the times right off the top of my head. Um, I believe it's, uh, I should have it in my calendar, seven o'clock on Sunday night and one o'clock on Monday afternoon, the 17th. Um, I had a question about synod registration, assembly registration. If you register now, the cost um, and choose the send a check. You can send the check after the third, um, but so the cost will stay at the time that you register. You don't have to get the check to us. Um, you will eventually need to get the check to us, but it's the cost of the day that you register. Thanks, Chris. It'll be, uh, I think it's gonna be a great assembly, even though it's, it's, uh, it's online, I mean, There'll be uh, a lot of reports um, in the form of short videos that'll be posted before assembly. And they're, they're there for people to view at any time, before, during, or after assembly. Some of which will play during assembly at various times and during breaks, uh, but some of which we'll, we'll entrust into the care of the delegates to, to look after and to make sure they find those. Um, Dr. Willie Jennings will be our teacher. He'll you'll hear from him twice that day, a keynote address and a Bible study. We're excited about that. So um, any questions about Synod Assembly? Must be the weather today. You know, it's kind of hazy and, you know, no one's really very talkative, but that's okay. I know you're saving it up for, it's going to be a fantastic message on Sunday, so. It's good to see you all, um, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you down the road here in one way or another. Pastor Carla, will you close us in prayer? Lord be with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this time together to connect with one another to know that we are not alone, that we work together in serving you and serving our neighbor. We ask that you be with those who are struggling within our congregations and our communities and around this world. Continue to um, strengthen our ministers as they continue to uh, nurture their people in your word. Give them um, a chance to rejuvenate their energies, give them a chance to rest and relax in the midst of all the COVID work that they have been doing. We thank you for your divine presence that blesses us more than we can ever imagine, that abides with us more than we can ever imagine, and that leads us in places yet unknown. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I want you to know how grateful I am to you for your ministry and your partnership in this work. Uh, and I, I know I, I speak for our whole staff. Um, we've, um, you've, you've continued to be faithful, uh, exercise the value of faithfulness in relationship and in ministry throughout some challenging times. So I'm grateful for you. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye everybody. <laughs>